everyone, and welcome back to Rooted in the Ozarks. I am Heather, and today we're gonna be making one of my very favorite recipes to make. It's wonderful all year long, but especially, you know, in the fall time here in the Ozarks, and it's very easy to put together. Um, it's something that I also try to keep in the house at all times. That way, you know, in case you have some people come over unexpectedly, you have something really nice, you know, that you can eat. So what we're gonna be making today is we're gonna be making some crostinis, and so on top of the crostinis, we are gonna have a goat cheese that we're gonna chop up some fresh herbs and put in there. We're gonna fry some sage. We're also going to do some blackberry and then a smoked uh, spicy honey. So this all gonna go together and make a wonderful, wonderful appetizer. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna infuse our goat cheese. So we've got some goat cheese here and this is from White River Creamery. It's, it's really, really good. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our fresh herbs in that. So what we're gonna use today is we've got some rosemary. We also have some fresh sage. So these are from Sycamore Bin Farm. Um, this is also something nice too. I grow uh, rosemary on my front porch just in a couple of big pots there. You know, as you walk by, it smells great. But then if you need to, you can just run out there and snip a few of, you know, the little branches off and you've got instant flavor. So we are gonna take about three or four of these, depending on how much you like rosemary. And we'll do this one. And these are kind of on the larger side. So I think this might be good right here. And we'll save the rest of this. You can also dry it. So if you have, you know, some leftover that maybe you didn't use all of, um, you can just pop it into a paper bag, punch a couple of holes in it so it can get some ventilation and sort of, you know, just let it sit there in that. And these leaves will dry up, they'll fall off. They'll be caught in the bag so they won't be all over your kitchen floor. Then you have dry rosemary. So we're gonna take the leaves off of them and we're going to scoot that over here. And you can actually take, if you've got a straight stem like this, and just go straight down and pull those off of there. And we'll do our top portion here. Perfect, we'll set this to the side. If you have a garbage disposal at your house, you can stick these down there and it will smell wonderful. Turn it on. So now that we have all of our rosemary leaves off of our stem, we're gonna sort of gather them up right here in a pile. We've got one that made it through. We'll just pull the rest of those off of there. We're gonna take a chef's knife and we're gonna hold it and with your other hand that you're not holding the knife with, just sort of place it on top here. That way you've got control over the whole knife. And we're just gonna do a rocking motion back and forth. So this is gonna cut up your rosemary um, into smaller pieces. And it's also gonna be a lot easier to chop it up. And we're gonna actually infuse our goat cheese with this. We are gonna put a little bit of the sage in there. We're not gonna put as much because we're actually gonna fry some sage up and that's gonna to top this. Alrighty, so now that we have our rosemary done, we're gonna do a couple of our sage leaves. So we have a beautiful bunch of sage here. And we wanna keep the larger ones um, for our fried sage. So we're gonna set those right over here. And we'll get some of the smaller pieces for this. So we'll take those. And we're just going to pull some of these leaves off. Again, if you get a couple of the stems, no problem. Okay, so we got those. We're gonna do the same thing that we did uh, with our rosemary with our sage as far as the cutting goes. So we've got them right here in the middle. And we're just going to do the rocky motion back and forth over our sage leaves. One more time. Okay, perfect. So now we've got our sage done. So we've got a bowl here. We already have our goat cheese in it. You wanna let it set out for, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes before you start doing this. Sort of let it soften up a little bit more. It is a soft cheese, but it'll just make it easier when you're trying to get your fresh herbs into it. So we're gonna take our rosemary, sprinkle that in, as well as our sage. And we'll come back if we need some more of that rosemary there. Oop, so we're gonna 
Put that there. We'll grab a smaller spoon here, and we just want to stir this around together. We want to make sure that there's no like giant clumps of fresh herbs um, on one side and you know hardly any on the other. And so you can even take your spoon, sort of mash it down. That way you know that it's getting incorporated in there. All righty. So now we've got all of our fresh herbs incorporated in, and we're gonna take a piece of our plastic wrap and pull this out. I'm still not that good with plastic wrap. I feel like that's when I will actually become a true adult is when I can manage plastic wrap without messing it up. That wasn't too bad. So now we're gonna take our goat cheese here we're gonna put it down on the plastic wrap. We wanna make sure we get all of that on there, on there. So we're gonna pull our plastic wrap and we're actually gonna wrap this together. We're gonna to sort of form um, like a rectangular shape. That way it can infuse in there and you know pop it in the fridge, let it chill. So what we're gonna do, I like to try to get it on either the far side or the size closest to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. And we wanna take and pull the plastic wrap over it. You might have to do this a couple of times. So that it's all in uniform shape. And if you need to, press it back against your cutting board. Um, and you know, you can pull this out again and do it over. No one's gonna see this part, so it doesn't matter, you know, if it doesn't look the prettiest. Okay, so we've got no air in there between our cheese and our um, end of our plastic wrap. So we're just gonna press this down. So now that we've got that there, and press up in front of it. So we're gonna roll that up. And then we wanna do the same thing with the sides. So we're gonna sort of push those down on each side there. And you can actually just take and twist this. There we go. And you can tape it together, you can tie it together if you've got big enough pieces. Um, you really just need it to sort of set like this. So you can pop it in your fridge, let it chill for a while, you can make this you know, a day in advance if you want to. So we've got this made. We're gonna set this to the side, right over here. And the next thing that we are gonna do to get um, started with our delicious appetizer is we're going to grill up a baguette. So I've got a fresh baguette here, and this is from Ozark Natural Foods. We make them, you know, every day. You can also get them from Tons of different local bakeries. Stone Mill is another one of my favorites to use for this. So we're gonna set that out there. So now we wanna, what we wanna do is we wanna cut our baguettes um, up into crostini sizes. So crostini means small toast, so that's what we're making here. So what you can do too, what I like to do, is I'll usually cut it in half, and then I'll work on it that way. So we do want to cut it at an angle we want as much surface space as possible that we can fill up with cheese and um, blackberry jam and honey. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slice pieces here at an angle. And so you want them to be you know, about an inch thick. You don't want it to be too thick because then it's hard to uh, chew, but you don't want it to be too thin that you know, all of your toppings are gonna fall off of it. And so we just wanna go through, cut all of these at an angle. And if you get some, you know, that maybe is a little bit bigger than an inch, that's fine. You just don't wanna go two to three inches there. Alrighty, and so while we are cutting this up, we're gonna go ahead and turn on our skillet here. And I've got a cast iron that I'm gonna do these in. It's my favorite um, to do, it gets super hot. Also, if you have one that has the grill marks in it, it's even better because then you can get those beautiful grill marks. 
So we're gonna add just a little bit of olive oil to it and let this get hot. Let's add a little bit more. And then we've got a silicone brush here and we're actually gonna brush on um, some more of our olive oil on top of it. And then when you get down to the end here, you can just flip it around so it's a little bit easier to cut. Cut that there. And go ahead and cut this end off as well. Alrighty. So now we have all of our bread pieces ready to go. I'm gonna take this oil here, swirl this around. You can also bake these if you would like to do that. Um, you know, just same thing, do your olive oil brush on there. Um, pop it in the oven and let it bake. I would say five to seven minutes. Um, I would do it at 350, just keep an eye on it. Um, you know, and make sure that it's not burning. So we're gonna test it out. We're gonna put one right here. See, and we're not quite there yet. So we're gonna set that here. Again, we've got our silicone brush. We're gonna brush on the other side. And we also wanna lay out some paper towels. So what we're gonna do is when those come off of there, we'll set them on that, sort of let some of that extra oil drain off, and then we'll go ahead and plate them. I think we are ready to go now. All right, so that's the sound that you want to hear, that sizzling sound when you put on here. All righty. So we want to have enough in here, you know, that we can get quite a few done at one time. We also don't want to overcrowd it. So let them have a little bit of space, that way it's easier to when you are working with it. Alrighty, so this is our first one that we put down. So we're starting to get some beautiful color on the sides here, which is what we want. We want it to be nice and crisp. Okay, and so before we flip these over, you can do little bit of olive oil on each one here. Alrighty. Set that right here. We will go ahead and we're gonna get this flipped over. And I'm gonna go ahead and move some of these other ones that were on the side, didn't get as much heat closer to the middle here. Okay, this one's good too. And it's really to your liking. You know, if you want them to be a little bit darker, you can leave them on there a little bit longer. If you basically just want to get them hot and get some olive oil on there, you can also do that. We'll go ahead and get these taken out. They're good. And let's go ahead and move our skillet around. Get some of that oil underneath of that bread. We'll go ahead and move these around as well after you initially get them on there. That way, you know, you can get nice coloration on it. All right, so our last couple pieces that we have in here are done. We're gonna go ahead and set those right over here. So the next thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get our blackberries ready. We're also gonna get our honey ready. So you could do this, you know, right before you serve it. You could do it again the morning of, have it that night, um, you know, or the next day. So the first one we're gonna do is our blackberries. And this is nice because it's very easy to change. So if you wanted to do, say if you had some cranberry sauce left over, you could use that in here. Um, if you wanted to add some different berries in, you could definitely do that. Um, if you've got orange marmalade, but maybe you don't have any blackberry jam or anything, um, use your orange marmalade and your blackberries. That's a very good combination together, and it goes nicely with this. So we're actually going to use fresh blackberries and a blackberry jam. Oh, we're actually going to use our wooden spoon for this one. Okay, so we've got our blackberry jam here, and we'll have to use this to get it out. 
So we're gonna put some of this in a bowl here. I like to do them in a separate bowl than what I'm gonna serve it in, so then you don't have to worry about, you know, making a giant mess in it. Okay, so you can use this, just have this, it works perfectly. I've definitely done that, you know, when I couldn't get any blackberries. So we just got some fresh ones in, so I wanted to go ahead and we're gonna put those in here. And then we're just gonna sort of stir it, um, sort of smash these blackberries down a little bit. We don't want to, you know, of course, turn them into a liquid because we have our blackberry jam in there for that. But this is nice, it sort of latches on a little bit better um, to your goat cheese and also sweetens up the blackberries just a little bit. All right, so we've got our wooden spoon here and we're just gonna take and incorporate this together And two, you can, you know, just take your spoon, maybe just smash them a little bit. Um, that way it makes it a little bit easier bites to bite. It's not a giant, you know, blackberry with everything else you're putting on here. All right, so now that we have our blackberry jam done, we're gonna set that to the side. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our honey to go in here. You could use, you know, any type of spices you want to in this. You don't even have to put any spices in it. Um, we are gonna be using red chili flakes, give a little bit of spice. Um, we're also gonna be using a smoked paprika. So a smoked paprika is also known as a Spanish paprika. It's not gonna add any heat um, to what you put it in, but it's gonna add this wonderful, complex, smoky flavor. And it works so nicely, you know, with your bright flavors of your goat cheese, also with the blackberries, and it pulls in nicely with your sweetness from your honey. So we've got our honey right here, and we are gonna use half of a cup. We've got some gorgeous local honey from down in Mountain Bird. And so before we pour our honey in here, we're actually gonna spray it. This is just a canola spray, you know, any type of spray you have for your cookie sheets, for your baking works wonderful. So if you spray this into, say, your measuring cups, um, you know, measuring spoons, and you put something sticky in there, like we're doing honey, maple syrup, you know, molasses, anything like that, it makes it a lot easier to get all of that, um, you know, sweetness out of there. So without it sticking too bad, we're just gonna spray in there. We're gonna pour our honey in. Pour that in and then, you know, you could either set it, you know, on here if it would balance and just sort of let it continue coming out of here. You can see right here, you know, it's already starting to come off of the sides of your measuring cup. Now we're gonna take our red pepper flakes here. And we just want a couple, you know, we don't want, we don't wanna make this super, super spicy. We just wanna add, you know, that extra little pizzazz to it. Okay, so we've got our red pepper flakes. And we have our smoked paprika right here. It smells so good. It is probably my, one of my very, very favorite spices. Okay, so we've got half of a teaspoon that we're gonna put in here. And it's a beautiful bright red color too. Okay, we're gonna take our spatula here and we're just gonna stir this together. So what's nice about this dish, you know, is that it's, you know, just a couple of things that you're putting on there but everything's so complex and has such, you know, added flavor to it that it just really all plays off of each other very, very well. We wanna make sure that we get it all stirred in nicely here. We don't want any clumps. Okay, so now this is ready to go. The last thing that we have to do is we're gonna fry our sage up. Okay, so we've got a smaller um, cast iron that we're gonna use here. And put a little bit of olive oil in here and get this turned on. And we're gonna get our sage leaves ready for this. So again, we wanna use 
the biggest ones that we have. And fried sage, if, you know, if you're making, say, like a fall pasta or anything with butternut squash, um, crostinis, anything like that, just throw a couple of your sage leaves and some hot olive oil for about 15 seconds, let them drain, and it just, it just adds a whole nother flavor that I still, over the past few years, I haven't found a word that would actually describe how delicious it is. It's just absolutely wonderful. So we're gonna just pinch our leaves off here. We'll go through and get some of our other big ones. A lot of sage in that bunch there. Okay. So we'll set this here. And if you've got, you know, like a stem that you can sort of, you know, hold on to from a distance so you're not, you know, sticking your hand down on a hot skillet, you can use that to test and see, you know, if it's ready to go. So we are almost there. Perfect. We want to make sure, you know, when we drop those in there, that it's instantly going to start frying. Um, so they're not just going to sit there and sort of, you know, soak up excess oil. Let's go ahead and we'll try one out. And that's what we want to hear right there. So we're just going to take and just sprinkle these in here. Of course, leaving room. You know, move it around here too. You don't want that to be directly on there without having, you know, any oil underneath of it. So we're gonna take again some paper towels here because we're gonna remove these and let them drain. So we'll take those off and you wanna get them off, you know, before they start burning. You know, as they sit and sort of drain and cool down out of the skillet, they are, you know, just crispy and Oh, they're so good, and they're beautiful, too. So that's another added bonus. All righty. Go ahead and take that, lower that down. Okay. So we'll go ahead, try those out. You can see that that's super crispy there. We'll move some that might be laying on top of each other. That way they can dry evenly. All right. So now we have all of our components, and now it's time to put it together. So you can arrange this however you like to. You can, you know, if you've got some extra rosemary sprigs, lay those in there around there. Um, make it as pretty as you want to. All righty. So I've got some gold bowls here that we're going to put some of our stuff in. And a few different plates. And so the first thing I want to do here is I want to get our platter. This is what we're going to put our bread on. And I like stacking it up. I think it looks super pretty. A mountain of bread. That sounds absolutely perfect. Okay, so we've got our bread on there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our sauces. So we've got our honey here. And you can see it's turned this beautiful reddish color, you know, from our smoked paprika that we've added in there. So we're gonna take and get all of that out into a small bowl. You can also add some more honey in there too if you, you know, if it's a little bit more flavorful than what you wanted it to be. Alrighty, perfect. So we'll go ahead and set that here. And then, you know, we can arrange it for, you know, the final effect when we get everything out. We'll go ahead and put our blackberries and the jam in a bowl. And you don't have to put it all out either. So if you wanna put, you know, some of it out um, and then refill it as you need to, 
That's usually what I like to do. And we'll put a couple more in there. Okay, perfect. So that's ready to go. We also have our goat cheese here that we've added some flavors to. And you could lay this out, you know, like as a log and people could, you know, cut it off as they went. You could take it, you know, smash it into a little ball again. I like to put mine in a bowl. This spoon here, we're just gonna smash this down. That way those flavors can still infuse there and people can, you know, get down in there with a knife or a spoon and get a good chunk of it out without getting a lot of air. Okay. And our last thing is our fried sage. So again, you can use a small bowl if you want to for those. Um, these tend to be a little bit more delicate, so I like to set them out, you know, on a plate. Okay, so now we have our uh, sage done. So ideally what you wanna do is sort of have it arranged to where the order and, you know, you want people to make their uh, crostini. So of course we wanna have our bread down first. So that's gonna be right here. The next thing you can do is you wanna put your cheese on the bottom, sort of give it that layer, um, you know, of the funky goat cheese, you know, the nice fresh flavors, and then add everything else on top of that. So you can keep it in the center here. You can move your bread over a little bit. Just, you know, have your goat cheese right here. The next thing what I like to do is you're gonna do your blackberries. It's a little bit heavier than everything else. So that sort of sets on there and then you drizzle the rest on top. So, you can stick our blackberries here. You know, stick your honey down here. And maybe sort of have your sage, you know, down there at the very end. Of course, you want to have utensils in there so people can get the food out. So if you have, um, you know, the honey dipper, you could go ahead and stick that in there. That's beautiful. We've got a little cheese knife here we can set. And then for the jam, you know, you can just have a smaller spoon in there. And you can either, if you've got a smear, pair of small tongs, sort of set that by it. Um, you know, if not, you can do your larger ones. Or again, you know, just a spoon is fine. Just something that people can, you know, actually grab one of those out of there with. And so now that we have our beautiful setup here, we can take one of our baguettes. We'll get some of our goat cheese here. And you just want to get that on top of there. Of course, don't leave any of that surface space. We want it all covered with the cheese. Okay. Take some of our blackberries. We've got a beautiful fresh blackberry in there. Get some of that jam as well. Okay. We've got some of our honey here. Sort of drizzle that on top. Go ahead and set this one down. Then we'll take a piece of our fried sage. That goes right on top of there. Thanks so much for watching Rooted in the Ozarks today. We are so fortunate we live here in the Ozarks. We have so much locally sourced food. Um, I encourage you to find as much locally sourced food as you can wherever you might be. And until then, keep it rooted in the Ozarks. Mm -hmm.